Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about releasing your book, which is obviously a hugely exciting moment in the process, uh, but also comes with a little bit of planning and some practical elements that you'll need to be paying attention to as well. First of all, the timing is really important. When you release a book, you want to give people enough time to assess it and adopt it for uh, the next semester that they're going to be working in. So you might want to think about if you want it adopted in the fall, you'll need to have a few months lead in time. And when you're thinking about the date that you're going to target for release, it's also useful to count back a bit and make sure that you have time for all the different processes that you'll need to go through. So it's not just writing the content, but also editing and reviewing. Uh, and then also, don't be surprised if that target date changes. It is absolutely fine. It likely will as you're working through uh, the project. And it's important to always revisit and adjust any timeline that you come up with so that you know that you've got enough time for the things that need to be done and that you're also making it, making sure that it's available when people will be needing it. Be patient, know that you'll get there, life happens, all sorts of things will come up along the way, uh, but have something to work to and you will get there. When it comes to preparing for release, one of the most important things you'll need to do is format your content. You'll likely have been working in something like Word or Google Docs to create it, uh, to do the editing, the review, things like that, but the final presentation format uh, is likely going to be very different and should be for some good reasons. When we think about what formats you'll be releasing of a book, the most important thing is to make sure that they are available online, offline, and in editable formats. This is important for students to be able to have the choice of how they engage with a text. There can be all kinds of factors that influence what works for them. So the more you can make available, the better. And at the same time, the editable formats are important so that people can exercise the rights that are permitted within the license. So it's one thing to say that you can remix content, but if the content isn't available in a way that makes it easy to do so, you are limiting what can be done with it in the long run. Formatting is also about making things consistent in the text and making them look good. Part of readability is that it's a nice, engaging presentation for students. The other thing with formatting is to consider accessibility. It's absolutely critical that this is built into the whole process of creating content. And this is really the moment where a lot of the work that you've done to prepare needs to be put into whatever formatting tool you're using. So things like implementing the alt text and really be thinking about what the presentation method is for students in terms of accessibility too. So if students have the option to use web content, maybe ebooks are better for them. There are lots of different options that can be front of mind here. Cover design is a really nice piece of this part of the process too. It can allow for a little creativity, uh, but it can also be very simple and there are lots of good sources of images and things online that you can use to create a nice, simple, but captivating cover. It's really good for getting attention and it's just part of making it look like a complete product. Front and back matter are the other piece here, which are essentially just the extras that live around the core content of the book. There are all sorts of things that can, can go into this and you'll pick and choose which are most relevant for you. It can be as simple as an introduction, maybe some acknowledgements. You might choose to do a glossary or an index. And then we also encourage you to think about some back matter that's a bit more particular to open textbooks. So something like an accessibility statement where you state clearly the work that's been done to ensure that the book reaches certain standards. You might want to include a review statement that is transparent about the review process the book has been through. And even something like a licensing and remix information page can be useful for others who are wanting to remix your book. So you can highlight anywhere where the licenses differ or, or anything else that will be relevant for them as they're creating an adaptation of your text. At this stage, you'll also want to be thinking about tracking adoptions and how you might be able to capture interest that people are showing in your book as you release it. Uh, that can be as simple as including a form uh, and other communications methods that you've been using already, making sure those are clear and upfront for people to use. And we have another video which talks a little more about adoptions if you are interested in more on that. Some of the other final checks to do to your content are doing a visual proof of the formats you'll be releasing to make sure there are no glaring errors, going through the metadata on your book to make sure that's all accurate, 
and doing a check again of your licensing. So if you have a global license for the book, making sure that that's really clear and then any other pieces within it that have different licenses, making sure that information is upfront and has the correct attributions along the way. Once your book is finalised and you're happy with the content, uh, you can submit it to repositories and you can also think about whether you want to have the book in print on demand. This is a really great option for some students. It's still the preference and can be really important for them. There are lots of print on demand suppliers around uh, and you can take a look at prices, processes and work out which will be the best option for you. The other thing at this point is to update your community who've been working on the book. It's good to do this a little in advance of the release so that they know it's coming and they can then be a part of spreading the message. So everybody who has been in contact with the book over the course of your project has an interest in it and they are somebody who will want to know what's happening and who you can, as I say, encourage to, to share the book as well. Acknowledgements are a really nice way to thank a lot of these people publicly and recognise the work that's been put into it. And if you can, this is also the point where you might want to think about sending out some thank you cards or sharing a print on demand copy with some of the key players who've been a part of making the book come together. Once you've been through all of these processes and you're really happy that the book is ready to release, you can go into the marketing phase. Now, as we've talked about in other videos, marketing is something we consider important throughout the whole process of creating your book. But here, the sorts of things you want to be looking at creating are a release announcement, uh, something like a short shareable description that you can repurpose wherever you're talking about the book. Collect some blurbs and praise uh, that can help sell the book. That's uh, nice to collect from people like reviewers who've already been involved and already know the content well. It's good to have the cover at this point. And you might want to create some tweet length blurbs that you can ask others in the project to be sharing to help get the word out. And so once your book is out there, Celebrate, enjoy the moment. This is what you've been working for for a really long time and it's a really great time to reflect on what you've achieved and just bask in it for a little bit and enjoy it. And then when you're ready, you can start thinking about what comes next for your book. We always talk about books in terms of release, uh, not something like publication that feels a little more final because part of the beauty of these texts is that they can live on, evolve, change, be translated, have ancillary materials added to them, all kinds of things can come out of this. There's enormous potential from this point on when you're ready to deal with it uh, and you can look to our other resources to learn more about that.